young. The median age in Egypt is just 24. Many are highly educated with advanced degrees. Well, despite that, though, they are unemployed or underemployed. According to the UN, Egypt's per capita income is $1,800 a year. The official unemployment rate last year was 9.7%, but experts are saying the real jobless rate is significantly higher. All of those factors created a volatile situation. Many Egyptian students right here in the U.S. are keeping a very close eye on the protests, knowing that their friends are among those on the streets. Sheriff Murad is a PhD student at Georgia Tech, and I'm pleased to say he joins us now. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. I want to start with a very basic question of how you are feeling seeing these scenes play out in Egypt, your home. Well, basically, of course, the situation today is, is very chaotic, of course, as you know, in the whole country. Uh, the problem is um, um, the people who are let out of the uh, prisons are, uh, are doing a lot of looting, of course, across the nation. Uh, the, the issue here, of course, we feel a lot of anger. We feel um, uh, there's a lot of chaos going on. We're still proud, though, of the Egyptian people and what they have, how they have accomplished to, uh, to get their, their freedom and trying to get real democracy. You, you touched on this issue of the fear, the anxiety, and the looting. Have you been able to make contact with family and friends? What are they telling you about the situation? Uh, yes, actually, my, uh, my parents, uh, they live in the district in Cairo. Um, stories from there are uh, that people were trying to doing a lot of vandalism and theft across the, uh, the district. And, and uh, people were trying to, uh, uh, the neighbors and the whole, uh, in that district where uh, the men were down in the streets um, carrying uh, basic, uh, you know, stones or whatever they could get just to protect those homes from getting uh, uh, stolen. Um, after that, the, the army came and take over, uh, took over. Uh, I spoke to someone earlier on today who said to me that the issue with the young people in Egypt is that they have no dreams, no dreams that can be achieved. Explain for our viewers here in the U.S. and around the world what the heart of the matter is here that is driving these people out on the streets, creating these scenes that we're seeing. Well, basically, of course, you hear about uh, poverty, unemployment, and other issues, but the real thing at stake here is, is basic human rights. Uh, freedom, democracy, and that's the thing that is at stake. And uh, the people, when they want change right now, uh, they need the change that is not only a change of uh, cabinet, it's not a change of um, another ministry or another, it's not getting a vice president, it's not getting um, a vice president from the same... So you don't regime. think this move of appointing Omar Suleiman is something significant? It's, it's not significant now to the people. They uh, are not convinced that a vice president from the same regime can do any good. Uh, uh, the Prime Minister cannot do any good, he's from the same regime, they want a change of the whole regime. Uh, and they want, they want to express their free will, basically. Uh, what is your sense about where the Mubarak regime stands now in light of these protests? Is this the beginning or the end, or, or is that really wishful thinking? Well, in, in a way it is wishful thinking, because uh, now that, he has, uh, that Mubarak has tightened the security, providing a government uh, very security-oriented, a uh, vice president that is not so lovable in, in the country, um, uh, being uh, part of the regime. Uh, so, uh, personally, I think it's, it's the beginning of the end. If you were there in Egypt right now, would you be on the streets? Of course. You would be joining these people in these scenes? And yes, and, and I want to mention here that uh, a lot of people have been talking about who are these protesters, what categories, what social categories are they coming from, is this Muslim Brotherhood, is this uh, whatever movement? No, it's just basically Egyptian people just wanting their uh, free will, wanting democracy and getting out there to express it. Is there a discussion among uh, people like yourself who are here and, and hopefully being able to communicate with people back in Egypt as to what a post mubarak regime would look like? Because there are fears in the U.S. as to what that could fill that vacuum. Do you share those fears? Um, uh, in a way, yes, but uh, of course uh, change in itself is a goal right now. Uh, getting a regime that really responds to people, getting a parliament that is re really representative of the people. Uh, that's really missing right now. Uh, so we need fair elections, we need basic human rights, we need uh, to get rid of the emergency law. We need a lot of things that um, at, at last we have kind of sort of achieved that and, and we are reaching out. The Egyptian people are urging the international community to feel that uh, this, this country is, as any other country, there's a people that has to express its needs um, um, uh, of course, looking at the, the, the future it seems uh, now, it seems very uh, chaotic, it seems very dark, but there is uh, light at the end of the tunnel.
Chair Morrow joining us here at Sydney Headquarters. We really appreciate your time and your insight. Wolfie here, Sheriff, saying that there is light at the end of the tunnel. That is a hope of many people that they will see change there in Egypt, Wolf. You make some excellent points there. Uh, thank you very much, Aisha. Uh, by day, tens of thousands are turning out to protest.